you crack through your eggshell into complete darkness, so deep in the ocean that sunlight has long abandoned any hope of reaching you. <sighs> Welcome to the bath hypologic zone, about 3,000 feet below the surface, where the pressure would crush a human like a soda can. You're one of hundreds of siblings, all hatched from tiny eggs expelled by your mother into the vast nothingness. No parental guidance here, just you against the abyss from minute one. The moment you hatch, your siblings scatter in all directions, disappearing into the darkness. You'll never see them again, which is probably for the best, since they might eat you given the chance. As a newborn female anglerfish, you're basically just a mouth with a tail attached. Your body is mostly head, with a cavernous jaw lined with needle-like teeth that point inward, ensuring that whatever enters never leaves. The only notable feature you possess is a small bud on your forehead, the beginning of what will become your most important survival tool, your fishing rod. This is the feature that gives you your name, the angler fish. Like a human angler with a fishing pole, you'll dangle a living lure to attract prey. Inside this fleshy lure, millions of bioluminescent bacteria have taken up residence. They create their own light through a chemical reaction, making your esca the only source of illumination in your pitch-black world. It's the perfect symbiotic relationship. You provide these microscopic tenants with shelter and nutrients, and in return, they give you light, the most precious resource in the abyss. Think of it as your personal fishing rod, complete with a glowing bait that you can flick and wiggle to entice curious prey. By your first year, you've grown to about three inches long. Your body has become even more specialized for your deep sea life. Your muscles have atrophied since you don't need to swim fast. There's nowhere to go in a hurry down here anyway. You can go weeks, even months, without eating. Your massive jaws remain open, ready to snap shut the moment something investigates your light. Occasionally, a curious shrimp approaches your light. Maybe it thinks it's found a mate. Whatever the reason, it's their final mistake. Your jaws snap shut with surprising speed, your teeth piercing the unfortunate creature from multiple angles. Your stomach can expand to hold prey twice your size, which is handy since you never know when your next meal will come. The problem is, food down here is scarce, really scarce. Like, consider yourself lucky if you eat once a month. Evolution has decided that this merciless environment requires a truly desperate survival strategy, which brings us to the strangest chapter of your life, finding a mate. It's like your body is saying, well, we're probably going to starve to death anyway. So let's focus on making some eggs before we go. Hmm. Meanwhile, hundreds of feet away, a male anglerfish is having a completely different life experience. While you've grown to a respectable size, he's barely the size of your eyeball. His sole purpose in life is to find you. He faces a brutal ultimatum. Find a female and permanently fuse to her body, or die alone starving in the darkness of the deep sea. He doesn't even have a functional digestive system. Once he burns through his yolk reserves, it's find a female or die. His miserable existence consists of drifting through the darkness, sniffing out pheromones that might lead him to a female. If he's lucky enough to find you, his real nightmare begins. He bites into your flesh, anywhere he can latch on. His mouth dissolves, and his body begins to fuse with yours. His blood vessels connect to your circulatory system. His brain degenerates until it's nothing but a pair of gonads attached to your body like a grotesque parasite. Congratulations on your marriage. This isn't a one-off event either. You might collect several of these husbands during your lifetime, all of them permanently attached to your body, reduced to nothing more than sperm factories ready to fertilize your eggs whenever conditions are right. Talk about clingy exes. These guys literally can't leave you. Hmm. With one or more males firmly attached, you now have a reliable source of sperm whenever you're ready to reproduce. This bizarre arrangement solves the problem of finding a mate in the vast emptiness of the deep sea. It's efficient in a twisted sort of way, ensuring that when food is plentiful enough for you to produce eggs, fertilization is guaranteed. By your third year, you've reached your adult size, roughly eight inches long with that distinctive bulbous body shape and menacing teeth, just like in the photo. Your body is basically just a swimming stomach with teeth, dragging along male partners that are permanently attached to you like bizarre living backpacks, Life settles into a rhythm of long periods of nothing, punctuated by brief moments of frantic activity when prey approaches. One day, something different happens. Instead of the usual small fish or squid investigating your lure, you detect something larger moving toward you. At first, you think it might be a meal big enough to sustain you for months. But as it gets closer, your primitive brain recognizes it as something else, a predator. It's a larger deep-sea predator. Its teeth gleam faintly in the light from your own lure an ironic betrayal by your most important hunting tool. For the first time in your life, you're forced to flee, 
The chase is brief but intense. Eventually, your pursuer gives up, unwilling to expend more energy on a chase that might not pay off. You live to float another day. The years pass slowly in your lightless world. There's no day, no seasons, just the endless pressure of the deep and the occasional meal to break up the monotony. You spawn several times, releasing thousands of eggs into the water to drift away on the currents. Most will never make it to adulthood, but a few might survive to become the next generation of floating nightmares. Your concerns remain the same as they've always been. Float, hunt, survive. Time passes, you've beaten the odds. Still, you can feel your body beginning to fail. Your lure doesn't glow as brightly as it once did. Your reflexes are slower. Your jaws don't snap shut with the same force. One day you miss a potential meal because you couldn't close your jaws fast enough. It's a sign that your time is coming to an end. Without the ability to hunt effectively, starvation is inevitable. But in the grand scheme of things, you've been remarkably successful. You've reproduced, passed on your genes, and survived far longer than most in this unforgiving environment. As your body begins to fail, something strange happens. An urge you've never felt before, a calling toward the surface. Instead of drifting downward like other dying anglerfish, you point your deteriorating body upward and begin to swim. Days pass as you ascend through different ocean layers. The water gradually warms around you. For the first time in your existence, you notice a faint glow that isn't coming from your own lure. It's different, brighter, more diffuse. As you rise higher, the blackness of the abyss gives way to the deepest blue you've never known existed. You've spent your entire life following your own light through the darkest places of the ocean, luring others toward you. Now, in your final journey, you're being lured by a greater light. The ascent becomes more difficult as your body, never meant for this journey, begins to give out. But you're close now so close. In your final moments, you break through to the surface. The sun, that mythical source of all light, floods your primitive eyes with its brilliance. It's too much, too beautiful. As your body gives out, floating gently on the surface waves, ironically a passing fishing boat spots your unusual body. A fisherman snaps a photo of you and posts it online. Hashtag deep sea monster. I've ever seen. Your final moment becomes your most viral. Within hours of posting their discovery online, you transform from deep sea obscurity to global celebrity. You become the inspiration and internet sensation to millions. Hundreds of articles and videos are published about your mysterious journey from the depths. Marine biologists debate what could drive a deep sea creature to make such an impossible journey. Philosophers write about the symbolism of your ascent. Your brief moment in the sunlight somehow matters more than your years in the darkness. In death, you achieve the fame that never mattered to you in life. But in that moment before the end, as you felt the sun's warmth for the first and only time, none of that mattered. After a lifetime spent creating your own light in the darkness, you finally discovered the source of all light.